Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to continue on in our series in regard to putting in some foundation elements of our residential design. What we're going to be doing in this video is putting in our footing for our, our design. Uh, we made some modifications to our design up to this. Uh, we put in our top of footing level in here. We made some modifications to our view range. And uh, now we're going to do something very similar to our first floor. So the desire here on the first floor is put a view range in here also of a negative foot so we can see as we're putting our uh, stem wall in here we can actually see what's going on there and we can actually see it being built so we can be assured they're actually actually doing the right thing and taking these steps I'm going to be showing you right now will help uh, you know uh, eliminate problems later and maybe uh, some time consuming uh, redos in regard to getting your uh, your stem wall uh, put in the right location so let's do this let's go to our floor one plan and make a change to that. Let's go to our view range in here and we'll make that uh, also a negative foot. And desire here again is to make sure that we can see our uh, stem wall where, when we're actually sketching it out. All the other settings stay the same. Uh, we also want to make sure that our stem wall is going to be the right uh, location. So let's go ahead and look at our uh, our um, uh, one of our elevations in here, one of our sections in here, and actually take a look at this. First thing you want to do is you want to verify the, the thickness of your core. So what we've done is we've actually uh, modeled our floor in here already, our first floor, and we what we've done is we put that, we modeled our first floor uh, so that it's on the outside, or the inside of our core face exterior, uh, interior. Sorry about that. The floor is on the inside of our core face interior. And what we've done is we've left the structure of this wall, of our exterior wall, just kind of hanging out there. And uh, the floor is going to be supported by our stem wall that we're going to put in here. So what's going to happen is we're going to put our stem wall in down here, and it's going to help support that floor and support uh, the walls go on top of that. A little bit different from our second floor. The second floor actually cuts into that wall, which is appropriate up here. There's a couple different ways you can do it down here too. You can actually have that floor actually st extend out to the edge, but I think it's a little bit better to uh, have it uh, supported uh, these, our first floor walls supported by the stem wall or foundation walls. There are other variations in here too where the floor would actually uh, come out. The, the floor itself, you know, the top of the floor, that, uh, you know, the horizontal structure, the plywood that would make up that floor, that could actually come out here and also be sandwiched between uh, the structural walls for the first floor and the structural walls for the foundation. We're not going to do that here, we're just going to put our foundation wall underneath this. So what we want to do is we want to verify uh, our core. And I believe it's six inches, but I'm going to go ahead and verify that. It still looks like it's six inches, so that's good. And the way you do that is you go up to the measure tool on your quick access toolbar. It's kind of like placing a dimension in a way. You're going to select the different planes, and you're going to measure between them, and it gives you a value. Short term, as soon as you press the escape key, it's gone. Okay, so let's go back to our floor, first floor. Let's begin to sketch our, uh, our, our our stem wall. If you haven't done this yet, go to the on the quick access toolbar again. Let's go to thin lines. If you have thick lines here, and you have the bold lines with the anticipation of how it's going to look when it gets into the into our uh, into one of our sheets, you want to make sure you go to the thin lines. We we'll make it look a little bit better in the, in the short term. We're going to change that back later. Uh, but uh, you want to make sure that you're able to see this adequately and using thin lines is a good way of doing that. Okay, a couple ways to do this. If you go to your structure tab, there's two different walls we're going to use. We can go to our uh, wall structural, which is our first choice. When we pull that down, it actually shows a wall that's going to support the floor. In a very similar manner to what we've done, it gives a little graphic up here. The second wall we're going to be putting in uh, go back to our structure tab. You just press your cursor over any of these icons. It gives you a little graphic and sometimes a video showing you how to apply that tool, which is a nice little feature. Once we get that uh, structural wall put in, once we put in that stem wall, we're going to put in that foot in, and that structural wall, that foundation wall, and the foundation palette over here in a structure tab and a ribbon. Uh, that's what it's uh, that's what it's going to do for us. So let's go back to wall. Another way of doing it is go to the architecture tab. If we go to the wall button over here and scroll that down, we could also access wall structural from there. So we're not going to save the project right now, but what we want to do is choose a generic wall. We're going to make modifications to it. So we're going to go to generic 12 inch wall. And then we're going to go to edit type. And we're going to pick 12 inches so we can actually see this build out. So we have a 6 inch core, and this is our core area right here. We're going to go between that edge that plane and that plane, or that surface or that surface of uh, of that structural boundary 
and we're going to build that wall. So it's going to start on this core face exterior and build out over here. So it's going to go out 12 inches so we can actually see it being built here. If we made it go out 6 inches, we wouldn't see it. There would be no confirmation that we're going to build that wall. So if we're going to go down to type, we're going to duplicate it like we've done before, and we're going to call this uh, something very similar. Following the conventions that Revy uses, we're going to call that foundation and uh, concrete. And then uh, 6 inches. If you keep it at 12 inches, we're going to call it 6 inches and come back here later and change that. Change the thickness on it. So we're going to go to OK. Go to Edit. And uh, we're going to choose Concrete for our category over here. So Concrete, Cast in Place. And go to OK. And we're going to keep it at 12 inches. So we're going to go to OK here. Go to OK here. Next stop is our Options bar. We want to make sure that we're going in the right direction. Typically when you put a wall in, you're starting at a level and building up from that. This is a little bit different because it's a foundation wall. Uh, it's going to be a structural wall, so we're going to go to depth. By default, it chooses depth. And we're not going to uh, go down... Um, hmm. Yeah, we're not going to go down to 22, but... Uh, depth is a first choice, but we're going to go down to the top of footing level for a second choice. This gets grayed out, so we're not going to put in any uh, any additional values in there. Don't want to use wall center line. We want to use definitely the core face exterior on this. So core face exterior. We're going to make sure it's changed so that when we uh, uh, select a different wall and a different face on a different side of the house, that it chains together and it'll it'll trim it for us, which is a nice little feature. Okay, core face exterior. Let's see if we can pick that up. So what we want to do is we want to pick uh, the exterior of the core. Remember the core is over here. We want to pick up the exterior of the core and try to get as close to the edge as we can. So there is an intersection over here. We're going to sketch that out. And then notice when we sketch that out, you can see the 12 inch wall. So now it extends into the floor. I can't really move my cursor and show you that, but as soon as we get to the other end of the wall over here, it will become apparent what we're doing. So we're going to go right to that intersection down here. And you'll notice that over here, that uh, that's the edge of the wall, so we can actually see it. If it terminated on uh, this other line, we would not be able to see it, and uh, there would be no confirmation, as I said before, that, that we're actually sketching a wall in the right location. So, kind of hard to pick up that, uh, that intersection up here, but if you pick up that wall down there, it looks like it's going to pick it up down here. But uh, you'll notice that the wall actually terminates here, but we actually want to go to the very edge down here. So if you don't get that intersection down there, you might want to extend your cursor out a little bit and pick up that element. So we have that in there. So all we have to do is go around the corner up here. So here's a place where we're not, be able to, we're not able to pick it up. If you just grab that a little bit, you should be able to get the intersection, or as it's doing right now, it's kind of snapping into place. So we're going to continue on our journey. And one more leg of our journey is to complete that by going up over here. And notice it trimmed it out. Real nice. Goes around the whole perimeter of the house. So we're going to do escape points. We're not going to draw any more, uh, sketch any more lines. And we're going to go to our section view and take a look at that. So now we have that stem wall in place. Remember it's 12 inches now. It's not uh, the 6 inches. But we're going to go ahead and confirm this in a couple different locations. And then we're going to go ahead and change the parameters of that wall to make sure it fits. So I think that's enough for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to trim that up and how to put it in the footing. And then we'll call that done.